and welcome back to episode number 5 of this tutorial series on Raspberry Pi for complete beginners. You can find the series playlist in the description. Let's get started. So in this tutorial, you are going to create your first circuit. For that, you will need to have your Raspberry Pi board. You will have to have also an LED, a 220 ohm resistor, a breadboard and some wires. If you are not sure about how to read the resistor's value, then please go back to the previous tutorial in the series. And I'm going to start with a quick note on how to safely manipulate the Raspberry Pi so you can avoid burning it and having to buy a new one. And then we will build the circuit together with the LED and the resistor. Working with the Raspberry Pi GPIOs can be quite dangerous for your board if you don't exactly follow the instructions and if you plug a wire in the wrong place. Note that you don't really risk anything by yourself. The current is too low to get hurt or to hurt anyone. The risk here is to kind of fry your board and after you fry your Raspberry Pi, you won't be able to use it anymore. So here are a few points that you have to follow and if you carefully follow them, you won't have any problems. First, always power off your Raspberry Pi when you make a change in a circuit, even if it's just disconnecting and reconnecting one single cable. Power off your Pi, remove the power cable, make hardware changes, and then and only then repower on your Raspberry Pi. Second, when the Raspberry Pi is powered on with some hardware components, don't touch the components with your fingers, you may damage your Pi with an electrostatic discharge, also called ESD. And also this is quite obvious, but don't use any metallic tool to touch the hardware setup when it's running, for example a screwdriver. Only bad things can happen if you do that. Third point, before you power on your Raspberry Pi, double or even triple check your hardware setup. Even if you're sure about it. Personally, even if I make the simplest hardware setup that I'm sure about, I still double check everything every time. 4. Always start with the ground pins and make sure that the ground is common for all your components. We are going to see that more in detail in the next lessons. And finally, GPIO pins support only 3.3 volt. Don't connect anything using 5 volt directly to the GPIO pins, okay? You may burn the GPIO pin. So that is not an exhaustive list, okay? Those are some of the most important points you have to follow and I will give some more warnings and stuff you have to do in the following lessons. Because just plugging a wrong cable in the wrong pin can destroy your Pi in a fraction of seconds and then you have to buy a new one. It happened to me in the past and it's not really fun. Of course, I'm not saying that to scare you, I just want to make you extra careful with any hardware setup you will do in the future. If you follow what I do and if you always double check any setup before booting your Raspberry Pi, then everything will be okay. Alright, and now let's build our first circuit. Let's start our first circuit with the Raspberry Pi. So first of all, what you can do is put everything you need here on your table. So I will need my breadboard, I will need my Raspberry Pi. Okay, and note that I have completely powered off my Raspberry Pi and also I have removed the SD card here in, from the SD card slot. Okay, why did I do that? Because the SD card will go a little bit outside of the board. So when you manipulate it, it may happen that you break the SD card. So it's better always to remove the SD card when you're going to manipulate the Raspberry Pi. Then I have two wires, so I have here male to female wires, okay, so a black one, okay, male, female, black one that will be used for the ground, and a yellow one or any other color, just maybe avoid black and red for now, so just take any color you want. And then I have, I have here an LED. Okay, so basic LED. As you can see, the LED has two legs and one of them is shorter. You have a shorter leg. And actually the shorter leg is the negative side of the LED and the 
longer lead is the positive side of the lead. Okay, so we are going to plug the negative side of the lead to the ground. And then we have a resistor. So this is the one kilo ohm resistor. Okay, I have a five band resistor. So actually, like this, so this is the same as I showed you in the previous uh, lesson. Okay. And the resistor uh, has no sense. Okay, so this is not negative or positive. You can just plug any side on the positive or negative side. It doesn't matter. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my breadboard and first I am going to plug the, well, before the LED, I'm going first to put the ground. So I take my black wire, the male, part and I put it on the here on the blue line okay I could put it here, anywhere on the blue line just chose to can put it here okay doesn't matter it should be just on the blue line and then I take my LED okay I can see here I have the shorter leg okay, the shorter leg which is that one here so what i'm going to do is put the shorter leg here to a ground pin okay the ground dot. so the shorter leg will be connected to the ground okay which is all of that line and the other leg actually i'm going to connect it to i'm going to connect it to another line here okay so the long leg is here connected to line uh, here it's 9 uh, 15 or 16 doesn't matter okay and the short leg to the ground and now i'm going to connect the ground so this wire to the ground of the raspberry pi and as you can see here on the image i'm going to uh, provide on the side you have to go from so you have two columns here you have the first one on the inside and the second one on the outside. And we are going to use mostly the one from the inside, okay? So that will be more convenient. And you have to count until five. So one, two, three, four, five. So you're going to plug the black wire on the fifth GPIO here. Okay, you can see on the fifth pin, one, two, three, four, five. This is important because if you miss that one, then you are not connected to the ground, okay? The fourth one is not the ground and the sixth one is not the ground, only the fifth one, okay? So now your ground is connected. So you have the ground on the Raspberry Pi, the ground on the breadboard, which is connected to the shorter leg of the LED, which is the negative side. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a resistor, so the one kilo ohm resistor, and I'm going to plug it one side, connected to the longer lead of the LED. Okay, as you can see here, it's on the same line. So this dot and this dot are connected together. And I'm just going to put it here on another line, not too far away. Okay, so you can see I have put one side of the resistor in the same line as the uh, LED, the long lead the long leg and one side on another here, another dot. And now the final step is simply what I'm going to do. Maybe I'm going to use it like this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put another, so the, the yellow wire here, the male into here. Okay, so on the same line as the resistor here. And now the female connector, I'm going to put it just after the ground one. So it should be on the six pin from the top, okay? And on the inside side of the Raspberry Pi. So one, two, three, four, five, you have the ground. And one, two, three, four, five, six, you have the wire which is connected to the resistor here, okay? So once you have correctly plugged the 
background. The rest is easy because it's just the following one of the inside. And now the setup is finished. So to double check it, we can simply see that. Okay, first let's check the ground. We have the ground here, which is going there. Then we have the ground, which is connected to the shorter leg of the LED, which is the negative side. Then it goes through the LED, the long leg, which is the positive side. And then it's connected to one side of the resistor here. The resistor is then connected to that dot. And we have the yellow wire, which is connected to the other side of the resistor. And then coming back to this GPIO. So the setup is not finished. So what you can do next is once you are sure that everything is correct, you can put back the SD card here. Okay, put it on a flat surface, put back the SD card and then you can power on the Raspberry Pi. All right, that's the end of this episode. If you found it useful, you will definitely like my full complete course on Raspberry Pi named Raspberry Pi for Beginners. This course contains 10 hours of hands-on video lessons. You can find the link in the description. Thank you for watching. See you in the course or in the next tutorial of the series.